I'm Corey from Gold Rush Expeditions. We're up here at the uh, Missouri Mill and Mine today. And uh, just going to do a quick walk through on the mill and touch on a few items here. So you can look right behind me. What you see back there, hopefully you know, is a couple of stamp mills up there. Um, a stamp mill itself is broken into batteries. A battery is five stamps. There's two up there that you can see. There used to be three. You can see uh, right up behind, probably the main processing where they're breaking down the ore and then it's getting pushed small enough to get into the stamp mill there. Um, there's a lot of metal, big wheels, big gears up there. Someone has taken it upon themselves to try and get some of them out. They haven't really succeeded in anything. But in trying to figure out how everything worked out here, that kind of stuff makes it really, really difficult. So we're just going to kind of shoot from the hip. Um, from the stamp mill, they came down here. This part of this box type thing that you can see right here used to have some little buckets that would run around and that would take the crushed ore up, dump it in, and then they would either have a cyanide or an arsenic solution, which would start running through this little corkscrew here, start breaking down everything else except for the gold and the arsenic or the gold and the you know mercury. There's a few things that'll bond with gold and whatever was cheapest was what they would use. My guess in this one is that they may have been using arsenic because you can see here we had big wood tanks. There was at least six of them that were counted out here. And what they do is they dump that slurry mix into here. This would be all your, your gold ore with water, with chlorine, with you know all the random chemicals that would stir it together and that would separate the gold out completely. Then it would come out this little back, this little door at the bottom here, which is usually where you end up with what they call tailings ponds. Um, all that goo would come out and you'd be left with the gold. Then it would probably go over here to this final processing plant that's down here. You can't really see it too very much, but we'll walk over there. Um, and that would be your final, where you'd get your final product. Probably even making bars up here because it's pretty high up, it's pretty remote, and it wouldn't make much sense to ship too much down below. And this is a huge operation. So before we leave this little section, um, I do want to point out, we talked about the stamp mill, we talked about the wheels. If you come over here, you can kind of look. There is a, you can make out part of the battery of the stamp mill over here, just the, the crank. that used to turn the stamps up there. So there was obviously another battery of stamp mill up there. What somebody's tried to do is gut that off from the road up there. They've obviously failed. I'm sure it was a really good hold my beer moment while they destroyed this big chunk of history that was up there. And most likely it wasn't so, hey, we can put a stamp mill in my basement or hey, we can preserve this stamp mill. It was probably your average tweakers up here that were like, hey, that's steel and we can go scrap that for some money. Um, not cool. There's very many ways that you can get away with scrapping a lot of this stuff, but the metal, the machinery, the stuff you see here is never going to be made again. It's not that we can't make it, it's that we have no idea how to make it again. So when you have an idea or you have a friend that says, hey, we should go up to this old mine site and scrap all this metal and we'll make like 200 bucks. Consider if that 200 bucks is kind of worth all the history that you're going to destroy to get that out. Now let's take a walk over here to the bottom of the mill.